Okay, so just looking at the uh, civil cells provided in the roundabouts DGN Live, these are modular based, so we actually have a couple of rotaries, one placed on alignments, second placed on a shape. We've got several approaches, a basic approach, uh, a couple of deflection left, deflection right, um, and then also a couple of uh, more approaches, just a a one lane uh, ramp entrance and exit and then we've got splitter island splitter median and then splitter uh, island with curb cut ramp and a median with a curb cut ramp and then we also have a bypass lane so so we'll demonstrate those in this video we'll start out with just placing a rotary on a alignment and we'll say OK then I'm prompted for the primary alignment. Quite honestly, in this case here, it could be either one, but I'm going to choose this north-south. And then a positional reference or intersecting road geometry, I'm going to choose that. All right, and that looks, that geometry looks good, so I'll reset and accept that sale. All right, then just going through a few of the horizontal edits here to change this uh, this this radius here. Actually, this one right there. I guess you'd be tempted to kind of grab that, but you really need to grab this line here. And so, if you want to change that, and just, we'll just change it to 90 feet, from 80 to 90. You can change that. We'll change this outside width you would go to the opposite side of this line here and change that negative 18 to I'm going to change it to negative 30 and then you also have a uh, edge of pavement for a truck apron there so if you needed to change that change that there So that's pretty much the horizontal edits. Okay, so we're not going to get real in depth with with uh, vertical here on this uh, rotary. Um, initially, this outside edge of pavement is is you know basically on the it's based off the primary primary alignment uh, intersection with that curve there and uh, a point selection of vertices. You may want to change that to all there. All right, and then a slope is projected two percent for this this uh, edge of pavement here. You can see that positive two percent, and then it's actually projected three percent uh, there to the truck apron edge of pavement. So generally, you know, so right now, really, this, this outside edge is controlling. Uh, most of the time, this inside edge is going to be your alignment. So that really needs to be the kind of neat. I'm not going to go through the process, but you would really need to come in and probably profile this element with the beginning and ending elevation being the same elevation. Really doesn't matter what you set it. You know, it could be based on the primary like, like this. Uh, and then you're going to project that profile of this element to this element. If that, you know, if your alignment here, you know, if your alignment is located along that inside edge, which generally it normally is. Like I said, I'm not going through that process, but plus there would probably be some adjustments to your alignment, you know, your incoming alignments as well. Alright, as far as the, the template itself, uh, let's turn on construction class. And then if we look at this uh, template, you know, that's the, that's the template initially, this, uh, you know, your roundabout area, your, your truck, truck apron here, and then you got a grass median there. And then there's a, there's a terrain inside that, so we go in there, so that grass median, and then you got a surface template out here in the median. 
All right, and you notice there is no, there's actually no in conditions. So on this template, on this side over here, there's no curb and gutter, or there's no sidewalk, there's no in conditions. And really we'd leave it, you know, we initially place it like that because once we get through placing approaches here, you know, you'd have to turn most of that off anyway. So we just leave that off in the sale. Okay, so next we're going to place a couple of approach cells. We've actually got a uh, four lane with a raised median on this north south alignment. On this east west alignment, it's just two lanes. And we're going to come in and grab just a basic approach here. I'm going to turn off construction class. And then there's uh, about six prompts here, so let's let's go through these. So locate reference element roundabout outside edge of pavement. That's going to be that inside edge of pavement. And then the approach alignment, and then the uh, it wants a data point at the roundabout outside EP approach alignment intersection. So that's going to be there. Then we'll show DP at the roundabout inside and the approach so there, there. Then once a data point along the alignment, it's a length control. It's just really you're, you're telling it where you want to stop this cell. So you just come in data point like right there. And that geometry looks good. So we'll reset and accept that cell. All right, and then next we're going to come in and uh, go ahead and place an approach with a deflection left. So this cell here. All right, so roundabout, same, pretty much same prompts here. So outside edge of pavement, inside edge of pavement, approach alignment data point at that intersection, data point at that inside edge of pavement intersection, and then data point for a length control. Alright, then we'll reset and accept that cell. I'm going to place the same approach on this opposite side. So, outside, inside, approach, got a point there, there. Really, this, this direction of arrow that needs to be away. It looks like this sail's adapting, adapting pretty good. We didn't reverse that one up there, and it looks like it placed okay. You know, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset. But as far as direction of arrows away, the approaches are always away. Let that arrow go away. And I believe it's right to left on the roundabout, but I'm, I can't remember. Okay. So we'll go over horizontal uh, edits on these approaches next. Okay, so we'll look at the horizontal edits on this uh, basic approach first. The uh, you know the length of this is controlled by that element there. And so if I wanted to change that, I 
175. Let me back that up. And then um, these elements here, you can see that we've, I've got that. It's just like a one foot there. You can actually come in and grab that element there. That you know, it's an interval there. You can grab that interval. In this particular case, we're tying that to a two-lane roadway, so we'll just squeeze that down to to uh, zero. Zero. And then we'll do the same thing on the opposite side there. Squeeze that down to zero. And then really for all these approaches, the um, really the inside edge of pavement, which is placed as this, uh, you know, it's on a feature of GM civil cell control, the settlement here. So you're like your, uh, you know, your inside edge of pavement there, or edge of travel. That actually controls this outside edge with that snap there to this lane line right there okay and then also initially um, basically we're placing a uh, a line uh, from element or to element to tie from and we're tying that there with a with a snap to this intersection there so, you know, if you wanted to change that angle, you can always pick this up and move that element like that. You, you know, you generally are not going to make an edit to that because it's tied to, you know, that and then this inside edge of pavement. But obviously those are both up, up for editing there. In this particular case, we're actually moving from uh, this is a this is a two-lane roundabout. In this particular case, we're just uh, going to exit the outside lane here. So, probably one edit I would want to make would be to select that element and change that offset to negative twelve. Okay, and you can see how that held you know that 18 feet held the 50 foot radius held what changed with this radius right right there and then if I wanted to actually come in and um, you know, this is an exit we won't want that probably a little little flatter I'm gonna make it just like a hundred foot radius there Okay, so you can you can kind of see some of the some of the edits you have to make there. If I wanted to change that, I think initially this is a, a two center curve here as well. Yeah, so a hundred and five hundred foot. Um, as far as horizontal for those approaches, you know, that's pretty pretty much it. Everything's driving that outside edge. And I guess the other edit would be. You know, your outside width, if you needed to change that, you would grab that interval there. We'll just go, go over here and modify this. Um, I'll also come in and change this to 100 maybe. You know, the key here with this horizontal editing is to really watch. And if you, if you see something, a break... You know, in fact, it's good to watch that 3D model as well. But if you see something break, undo that last change and just just try to understand why is that breaking? You know, why is that not fitting? You know, because there there are geometry edits you can make here uh, that's going to, you know, somewhat break that sail. That 100 foot radius there is really pushing... Uh, you know, if I went to 125, 130, I'm not exactly sure that's going to push beyond this element there. 
right? So, you know, that, that might mean you may have to come in and kind of shift shift exactly where you're tying, similar to that, to give you more room to actually change that radius value there. All right, so now we could, if we want to come in and make that 125, we could do that without, you know, without that arc going beyond that element there. What I'm going to talk about vertical for for this uh, basic approach here so if we'll look at this this uh, edge of pavement there you can see that two percent projection so you know we're just projecting two percent from that center line and doing the same for this opposite side there and then we're making the uh, you know the curve that would be created using the quick profile transition between that two percent edge of pavement and this uh, outside roundabout edge of pavement there okay as far as these median edge of pavements they're they're profiled as well because that's what you place your islands or median on those profiled median edge of pavements uh, and they're actually profiled from a a terrain model right there kind of had to snap a few times to grab that but you know those median edges are profiled from that terrain there okay so that's, that's pretty much it I mean it's pretty straightforward on the vertical All right, so next we're going to actually move on to the we'll go modify this approach here which is your deflection left approach Okay, similar to the uh, basic approach, the, these median edges on the deflection left control those outside edge of pavements. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through, like I said, a few of the edits here, and we're actually we need to match up the horizontal geometry so that uh, uh, the median matches this 16 foot median up here and uh, two 24 foot divided edge of pavement so let's go through a few of those so I think the first thing I'm going to change if you'll come in and grab there's a parent of an interval there that'll control that right right median edge of pavement and really but really before I make that first edit let's just talk about this geometry at first so just looking at this this here you can see we've just got a three foot median back here or three foot over it's really a six foot median three feet each side of the center line initially and then we've got a, a 400 foot radius there so that, that deflection left that's that's what we're doing we're deflecting this this geometry to the left side so we can actually speed traffic out, up coming out of the roundabout and slow traffic down coming in into it so so really the this median edge controls that outside median edge and also really controls this other median edge and um, that outside edge pavement on the left as well. So, or so back to these edits. So the first edit, like I said, there's a parent there, and we're going to move this over. Changes from three to eight feet there. All right, and then we're going to. Might as well go ahead and line up the outside edge of pavement here. So we're going to change that from 12 to 24 feet there. All right, then we're going to select this interval here. And we're going to change that offset there from negative uh, 6 to negative 16. And this should move the... Uh, the entire median over and it did and then this last edit to, to align this left edge of pavement with that that one here I don't think we can make that uh, as one edit there's a complex element there and it it appears we're gonna have to change that two different times there so I'm gonna just go ahead and change this one to negative 24 feet which will make the 3D model kind of 
look a little a little ugly for just a second anyway and then we'll come in and just grab uh, this element here and we can go to this complex grab that and change that negative 12 12 foot offset to negative 24 to line that all back up there All right, so a few more edits. Um, we'll just change this value here to like 28. And then we'll go do the same on this other side. And then you can kind of look at those. Uh, those radius values there, they're not, not too bad, so. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the horizontal edits uh, you can make. Obviously, you could do something different. You could change this, this 400 foot radius, but I'm just maintaining, going to maintain that. You could change that 90 foot radius as well, but I'm going to just maintain that. Okay, so vertical wise, if you you know if you look on these outside edge of pavements, you can see that two percent projection. That's coming off that that alignment there, negative two percent, and then the the arc there is just a you know a quick profile transition between that two percent and then that outside edge of that roundabout. Pretty much the same thing on the out, other outside edge of pavement. I'll uh, probably project two percent on that parallel, negative two percent down on that parallel. Uh, part right there as well. Now the median is a little bit different and so if we'll kind of look at this and it, and it is you know you're going to want to look at this profile because it really uh, you can see these these median edge of pavements are, are wandering off of that center line a good good deal and sometimes it's on the left side or sometimes on the right side of the center line so so I just turned construction class on because there's a uh, there's a uh, element there. So if we we'll look at this, we'll open the profile view of this one. So here's your active profile there. Okay, and then here's the projected profile there. So basically what we're doing, you can see it's a 2% slope there. Basically we're just off of that center line, we're projecting positive 2%. Um, which is this right here. And then we're really just connecting that line or, or that 2% projection, a line from there. To there so there's our active this is just a projected slope um, so that's kind of what we're doing really transitioning really basically what that would do that would mean back here you're at two percent up and then we're transitioning all the way from there to there to tie to that edge of pavement and basically the same thing on the other side right, so that's that's the vertical there Okay, so next we're going to talk about a couple of more cells. I'm going to close that profile view. We'll turn construction class off, and then we're going to come in and go place some island and median cells. And I'm actually going to place a an island cell, so a splitter. Island. I'm gonna choose that. And that's what I'm actually come in and place over here. So just following the prompts. 
the left median edge of pavement profile, left looking at approach from roundabout, so that would be this one, right, that would be this one, and then uh, match line, uh, seam line, match line at roundabout outside edge of pavement. I think I'm going to turn on construction class to be able to get to this element there, that GML there. And that geometry doesn't look good, so I'm going to have to rotate or change that direction of arrows. Both those away, and it looks like that's left or right. So it looks good, so we'll reset and accept that sale. Okay, so we can see that island. We'll actually come back in and talk about some of the edits uh, a little in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and place this uh, that splitter median. This time I'm actually gonna place one with a curved cut ramp. So I'm gonna come in here and just place a element or, a, or that's really where I want the center line of that curved cut ramp to be. So let's go. Select that cell and place it. And then looking at the uh, splitter medium with curved cut around, so I want that one. And then the uh, left median edge of pavement profile, left looking at approach from roundabout, that's going to be that. The right median edge of pavement, that. Uh, the seam line, which is going to be that. And then the curb cut ramp center line, placed from left to right. It's going to be that. And that geometry looks good, so I'll reset and accept that cell. Zoom in and kind of take a look at that curve cut around there. Alright, next we're gonna like I said we're gonna talk about edits next. Okay, so far as uh, edits on this uh, these islands or medians, we'll turn construction class on. And then I'm going to select that edge of pavement. And then we've got this thing set up just initially at zero foot all for those median edges and that roundabout edge. So, um, so if I want to change this offset down here, I'll grab this, this first fillet. I want to change uh, that head offset. I'm not sure which way this is going to go, but I'm going to change that head offset to one. And quite honestly, you can shift these either either which way you want to go there. So if I now I've kind of got it like that. So like I said, you can shift these either way. So if I wanted to make that whatever negative three. to put negative three but we'll just kind of keep on moving this thing over so because I think what we're going to do is we're going to shut this lane down and just carry one one lane through through this intersection here so like I said we would just come down and I could make that uh, we'll try 12 I mean, you can really just walk this thing over And then I'm going to come back and change the other fillet, which is going to be the back offset. And I don't know whether it's going to be positive or negative, so we'll just have to see.
and it's a positive. So, like I said, you can you can scoot those um, either which way you want to go there. You know, if you do need to reprofile these, you know, as long as they're on that edge of pavement, I think you're you're good. But when you start moving them moving them off, you can kind of see kind of getting up inside of that uh, pavement there. I don't see that. I thought it would turn out a little bit better, but you can always reprofile that, right? So I mean, you could always just come in and open the profile view and come in and do a uh, geometry and then do a profile from surface. And this is similar to the other islands in the T intersection cell. So choose the element. Reset and then locate the reference surface. So the reference surface is actually going to be we have to zoom in. It's kind of hard to grab that, but we're looking for that for profile and island terrain model. That one and change that to zero. Change that profile adjustment to none. I'll reset. And did that come out right on top of it? profile open here. So if I come in and look at this profile you can see that new profile right there I believe. So if we just make it active that island should pop up there. You can see it looks a little bit better now sitting on top of that island. That's kind of the kind of the editing process there. And like I said, we're we moved this in, but if you wanted to leave it where it was, if you wanted to uh, you know make it a tapered, or if you want it parallel, just backed off some, any of that's fine. Any of that movement is fine. And this this side here would work really similar. Okay, so kind of some final cleanup items here. So this area here, what I would do here to just kind of finish that model is just apply a linear template. Uh, and we'll choose that from the roundabouts folder. It's an approach uh, with no pavement. And this isn't going to be a lock to start, so it's going to be from there. Confirm that template. And then the start is going to be there. And then the end's going to be there. Select the side. Okay, so that, that place that, that kind of closed out that side there. And then another thing I've done, I've come in and I didn't I didn't do it in the video just to save some time. I made some edits over here to this geometry there. And I'm gonna close uh, this profile view. And then uh, we're gonna go in and Place the last cell that's uh that's in that roundabout DGN, or at least the last cell type that's in that roundabout DGN, which is a bypass lane. Now, before we actually place that element, you really want to come in and place uh, place a simple arc here, and 
I'm basically going to come in and select that element, those, those two intervals there. And really what I'm doing here is just about seeing where I want to put a put a data point at. Like actually it's it's about where that limits construction there is. So that gives me an idea when I place this cell where the data point because you're actually placing uh, this this data point that controls that outside edge of pavement for the bypass lane there. All right, so let's go place that bypass lane cell. All right, so the left uh, approach EP not complex, so that's one that's just a simple element. You got to choose a simple element where the curve's tying to here. So that's actually I can choose this interval, and then the right EP, and we're looking from the approach, but the right edge of pavement's going to be this interval there, and then it wants the uh, left edge of pavement complex, so that would be that edge of pavement, the right, that edge of pavement, uh, roundabout outside edge of pavement, which is going to be that, and then a data point, I'm going to turn AccuSnap off, but a data point, I'm going to say about right there. Right, we need to look at these uh, direction of arrows. All right, so I had to change those direction of arrows. All these uh, edge of pavements we choose are away, and then that roundabout outside edge of pavements left to right. That geometry looks okay, so I'll reset. And like I said, notice we placed that outside edge of pavement through that point there, and then I'm going to accept that cell. Okay, as far as edits on it, I mean, we're not going to get, uh, too detailed here. So that width, control that there. Um, Actually, on this outside edge of pavement. So, if we choose that, you can see that we're initially uh, assuming that you're going to have a, a turn lane there. But you know, if you're if you're not, you can just shut that down to zero like that. And then we could do the same thing on the side there. Shut that down to zero. So basically no turn lane is what, what we're saying there. And then you could come in if you want to on this same element. And then you can see it, you, you know, that data point is controlling the radius of that uh, outside edge of pavement. So if you wanted to make that nice and nice and even for something you could do that and then really the last little edit I'm gonna make on this is I'm gonna come in and uh, select this and I'm gonna just you can go to intersection snap but I'm gonna just snap to that clean this, this little area up there and then I would do the same thing on this this offside there Maybe it's this move this back and 
time to there, I think. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty much the roundabout sales covered. I mean, we didn't probably touch everything. You know, if I wanted to come in. Don't look great in the 2D view. We still got those, you know, those civil cell control lines. But you can cut those off, right? Some previous. Another thing we really hadn't cleaned up. I hadn't even placed approach on this other side. And uh, another thing we hadn't cleaned up, you know, this connections here, which you just move your template or you move your, you know, control your cell with uh, that length control element there, right? So just move those. One other thing on that bypass lane, you know, on these deflection lefts where you're tying to this side, so if we're replacing that cell over here, you know, the key to those is to, uh, you know, I think I showed you to use the, the place, place simple arc, because that's what it's going to play, place simple arc between a, a simple element and a simple element. Now, you do choose those two complexes, but... You know, if you don't have, like over here, if you do not have an interval that you can choose, you know, you can come in there and just do like a single offset. So, you know, you got to determine where you, where you want that for the bypass lane, where you want to tie that outside edge. And if it's, if you want it tying right in here, what you can do is copy parallel like that. So just kind of reset until you get down to that middle element and then you'd have a single element there you could tie to.